Hello, just reading from the opening of The Journey of Water. Uh, my name is Catherine Davies and I'm the author of the novel and it's on Amazon worldwide as an ebook for the moment. Under whispering rain, the old capital stretched out its veins to the sky. Centuries of toil lay beneath the stone and towers. London, a refuge for which millions had risked drowning to reach, no longer held the attention of Eleanor Lees. She stood alone at the giant sliding door, watching pearls of water forming on the glass. The wall-to-wall -wall view of the city dominated the apartment. Facing north from the south bank of the Thames, you could see much of central London and a broad sweep beyond. It was a world away from the usual digs for London nurses. Eleanor's former place to sleep was a room in a share house noteworthy for the pervasive smell of car fumes and takeaway. At 37, with few possessions and a long way from home, Eleanor was, to anyone else she knew, most fortunate. Her liaison with a wealthy trader the grand finale of a series of attempts to find enduring love. But fortunate she did not feel. She had her easy days. Thanks to years in nursing and its many routines, she kept it together and largely concealed her true state to almost everybody, including herself. Her boyfriend was absent. Born accomplished, Baxter Wilde enjoyed a lion's reputation in the financial markets. Chiefly in his domain, complex strategies such as the jelly roll and the straddle. His stripe of bank eschewed empathic types like Eleanor, other than when their presence was required for a poignant perfidy of philanthropic marketing. But three years ago, knocked sideways by a huge trading loss, Baxter had drunk so much he nearly died, and he fell for the attentive Aussie gal in the emergency department of St Anthony's Hospital. Why she fell for a monosyllabic banker soaked in urine remained a mystery. The Baxter, banker, bankers of his ilk, would typically date a younger woman. Perhaps she offered the night nurse package for the time poor, she pondered later, as their relationship cooled and they became the strangers they had always been. But at the outset, as soon as the patient could walk and pee, Eleanor and Baxter became an item, or rather, Baxter and Elle. With their long working hours, dating proved a challenge logistically, and they were soon living together. It was the practical choice. The first and last visit to Elle's place was brief. There was nowhere to park his car. Inside, he stood stiffly, unresponsive, facing the stains on the wallpaper. She wanted him to visit her bedroom, where she had spent some time the night before, washing and furnishing with plants and pictures, reordering her things to make a little space in the cupboard and empty a drawer. She was quite pleased with the result, and to the delight of her housemates, she kept going, tackling the communal bathroom and the kitchen. She was on a roll. Baxter, however, did not move his impeccable shoes until a zing emanated from his trouser pocket. As he walked out the crooked door, she saw his hand flick away as if to cast off a side of life he wanted nothing to do with. All at once, she felt mortified, sad, and glad she had covered the large stain on the living room sofa with a throw. She understood his reaction and followed in his wake. She cursed the front door as she lifted it to engage the lock. She did not notice the shadow in her heart. She was relieved to escape the dump where she lived and the hordes of traffic passing its door. She was excited to find the giant fishbowl had become her new home.